Hello, this is Ry Beckman with thefutureofhealthnow.com, and today I am here with my good friend, Mr. David Favor. Howdy, y'all. I'm very happy and grateful to have David here on the site for you. Uh, he's going to be sharing with you today some of the scientific health benefits of niacin. Ooh, scientific. And more importantly, uh, niacin for weight loss. Is that correct, mm -hmm. David? So, yeah, let's talk about niacin for weight loss and also for... Um, uh, dementia and Alzheimer's. Wonderful. Which is some, some, I mean, it's a lot of old work and new work being done in that. Yeah, that's great. So, so David, I'll, li I'll let you share a little bit with our audience and the, the community that's watching this on who you are and what your background is and what your experience is. Cool. All right. So, um, I have a really kind of odd background. Sure. Yeah. Um, when I was two years old, I um, had an accident. I filled my stomach with gasoline. And I pretty much lost the ability to normally metabolize and assimilate nutrients as most people can. Mm -hmm. And what that forced me to do was um, hover right above the threshold of death for the first 33 or so years of my life. Gosh. And so it took me that long to figure out how to get, how to, to um, organize and arrange my nutrition where I was actually went from barely surviving to thriving. Mm -hmm. And I'd say that that was actually a blessing mm -hmm. because I'm in probably far better health today than if I just, you know, grown up in a farming community in rural Oklahoma and had no issues and just was still, you know, eating the way my relatives eat. Yeah. And so what that caused me to do was, um, really think about things in a different way than most people. So my view of scientific, I'm going to explain what that is. So, sure. so it's a little bit different probably than maybe some people on this that are watching this are used to. Um, unfortunately, scientific, um, as it applied to me, if I'd gone the scientific route uh, when I was... Or maybe the recommendations of the medical professionals you had. Yeah, which life. is the scientific route, right? Because that's what they knew. The science said when I was 17, I had to have everything cut out from the bottom half of my stomach to my rectum. Yeah. I had doctors tell me that the only way I could live, the only way I could stay alive is they had to take me into surgery and cut my intestinal, my whole intestinal tract out. Mm -hmm. And I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And I had this guy that was, you know, he was probably 60 years old and had, to, you know, a team of people he was working with. That, that They're very learned people and I had a lot of experience. And from my perspective, though, I'm 17 years old and this guy's telling me I'm going to have to wear a poop bag. <laughs> And can you imagine dating at 17 with a suit bag? How not, are you going to explain that to your date? Not right? necessarily a, an appealing thought. So the, the, the question I posed to myself, um, because my dad taught me the sort of the art and science of critical thinking, and that is to question everything. Uh -huh. and, and so the question I posed to myself is, has there been a single person in all of history who's reversed this in some other way besides having their guts cut out? It's a good thought. And so my 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 theory was uh, was that there probably had to be at least one person. Mm -hmm. And if there had been at least one person, maybe I could find that person or some of those people and figure out what they did and duplicate some of their experiments and maybe be able to somehow get by through life without wearing a poop bag. Fair enough. That's a good question. Uh, now, that's pretty good. Logic for a 17 year old kid, right? Yeah, so anyway, uh, kudos to my dad wherever you are today. He's passed over, but anyway, thanks, dad, for helping me think in a critical vein. And so, uh, what I learned over that 33 years because that was before the internet, I mean, I had to scour all sorts of medical journals and had to network with people one on one, had to ask them, you know, has your relative had problems like this? Do you know anybody? How what did they do? And so what, I, what I've come up with is the way that I treat science is I'll go places like PubMed, for example, okay. or uh, JAMA or, you know, different type of peer-reviewed journals, and I'll read the, um, what's published there, and then I'll take that and put it through my filter of like what, you know, because the person writing it or doing the study is coming in one direction, what happens if I come from a whole different direction? What uh -huh. can I make of that data? Uh -huh. And so I take a lot of um, information out of the scientific community and I come up with interesting experiments to run. And I run those experiments and those experiments yield data, which is happens in my body. And then I share that with other people in my tribe or my client base and they do experiments too. And so we have this sort of real-time evolving database of taking scientific literature and data and running it through our own bodies to see what works and what doesn't. And one comes up different 
So it's an interesting, um, it's, very, it's a little bit different way than most people think well, of yeah, scientific. And, there's, and to be fair, that, that's an evidence-based way of Yeah, it's very things. evidence and experiential. It's the it, Chinese Oriental Medical. Sure. And, and to give a little bit of context to those that, are, those that are out watching this for the first time, because this is the first time we've had uh, David Favor on the Future of Health what we're What David has done is over the last 10 years, David's had a superfood business. Uh, so he's one of the original pioneers in the whole space. And you've helped through your distributors and your uh, resellers, probably conservatively tens of thousands of people oh, yeah. who've purchased your products over 10 years now. And David has really, really thriving fans, like people that take David Favors products, which is Sunfire Superfoods, and they are not only fans, they're like, they're like, you know, they're very adamant, very excited people about the zealous. products. Very zealous fans. So the people I found out about David's products from originally almost three years ago now uh, are people that in the health and wellness world that I that are that have their own companies that mm -hmm. you a lot of you probably already know of, and they were really big fans of David's products. So I came to find out about him through a very high level introduction. So I came in, uh, you know, already thinking very highly of of what had been shared with me and also what I'd seen you done out there in the world. So yeah. And, you know, and I, I ought to give an example of like um, uh, one of our clients uh, here recently came to us and said um, she had been diagnosed with um, late stage diabetes. Okay. I mean, and she had lost um, all the feeling. She had uh, neuropathy, all the feeling in her uh, mid arms to hands and calves to her feet. And the prognosis um, was that she had a surgery scheduled for 10 days from that moment, uh, to do uh, radical amputations of her uh, feet and hands. That's horrible. And she came to me and said, gee, David, what can you do? Is there anything we could do? And I'm like, 10 days? Yeah. Um, it's a short time frame. It's a short time frame. So uh, what I said was, well, we'll try some experiments. And my only request is that if you start making progress, you just don't, don't, um, say you're not going to have the surgery, yeah. just postpone it. Yeah. Right? If you're getting better, you keep postponing a radical surgery, and if you get completely recovered, then you skip it. Yeah, that makes sense. Fair and right. so um, uh, she was only able to do some uh, simple things, and actually we're going to talk about niacin in a minute. I would have told her to do niacin, but that was before I started using it. Uh, and all she did was uh, really high-grade water and uh, let's see, digestive enzymes and salt. You wouldn't think that using salt, you know, there's a lot of uh, information in the the uh, sort of the health space that salt is bad, and it depends on the kind of salt. But um, she was really salt deficient. So she went away and did a set of experiments, and she came back. I told her to come back in five days, the halfway mark. So five days, and then the surgery's in ten. So let's take a, take a check at five days. She came back at five days, and I said, well, what happened? She said she had complete feeling returned to all her fingers and toes wow. in five days. Wow. And if she hadn't done these simple experiments, she would have had to have radical amputation of all her limbs. That's not good. No, well, and that's, so that's, that's really hard. interesting, right? So that's, you got to run your experiments first just totally. to see if they work. <laughs> and, it's, and it's really hard to believe, you know, to be fair for everyone watching and myself here sitting here, that that kind of progress is even possible in five days, to be fair. Well, it's interesting because, because in her case, she was so hyper um, uh, dehydrated that her vascular passages couldn't pass fluid to her limbs. Huh. And so all I realized that all I had to do was help her open those passages up. And so that's the, we'll talk about niacin now. Sure, yeah, yeah. So niacin, and, and actually niacin would have been the first thing that I would have told her now if, if this was happening now, because niacin it is one of the cheapest substances you can get a hold of, and it has so many interesting uses. And before we get into that, just, just for everyone watching, and thank you very much for sharing that story. I'm really happy to hear that. This is obviously something that's an, that's a, an experience that you had. And uh, and we're, we're, I'm always happy to hear stories like that that turn out for the better. And, you know, it is it is really shocking and surprising that those kinds of results may very well be possible in that short a period of time. But I appreciate you sharing it with the audience. And if you well, guys and are, keep in mind, it's a theory, too. So theories yeah. can always be proved <clears throat> positive or negative. Or disproven. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. I'm not saying that you can, you know, sometimes, you, you know, you've got to have a surgery to save your life. you got to yeah. do it. However... 
However, the first thing you do is everything short of anything radical first. Yeah, ideally that there, you that and that I think we can all agree with is that you go out there try alternatives before having your limbs amputated if there are any yeah. possible options. Well, and it's interesting. Right. I tell my I tell my clients I've got a set of questions to ask their uh, practitioners they're working with, and the simple question is: you go in and present a set of symptoms, and you say, you know, um, as a practitioner, if you had this happening with you. What are the top things you would do? You know, what are the first five or ten things you'd do? And if those first five or ten things, are, the, if the first thing on the, is on their list is surgery or drug therapy, then it might be good to check with the few other practitioners and find one that says, well, you know, I had this experience of using, you know, some kind of herb or a some kind of alternative or therapy. Natural or an alternative yeah, therapy. Anything. Yeah, fair enough. And, and so you look for those people who have, it's not saying that somebody that, recommend surgery or drugs is wrong it's just saying that's what their experience is, has uh, shared with them yeah and so what you do is if that's okay with you you go that route and if you'd like to go another route you find somebody that has that particular set of core competencies they've had that experience of having an alternative so yeah that, that's what I do that's and that's a fair enough example I think many of us would probably be inclined to go and be in that road as well well I, I prefer that too <laughs> so anyway nice yeah. Niacin is really cool because it's very, very cheap. I think, um, and I'll give you the link to the niacin I use because I think last time I checked, there were like almost 3,000 different versions of niacin on Amazon. Uh -huh. And those, there's only one I would put in my body Fair out enough. of 3,000. That's a good recommendation. Uh, and the reason for that is there are no other chemicals added to it. The only chemical flowing agent it has is a coconut product. Uh -huh. And so it's nothing but niacin and coconut. Oh, great. That's it, great. period, in the, in the capsules. And so... Um, what niacin does, it's, it's a really simple technology, is if you think about your, your uh, fluid passage in your body as big, long tubes, then your health really revolves around the, the speed at which fluid can transit through all your tubes. Because okay. right? that, that takes uh, water and oxygen and nutrients to all your cells, and then as your cells metabolize and throw off metabolites, which are exhaust, it takes eliminates those and takes them back to flush out of your lymphatic system and your digestive tract and your urinary tract. Uh -huh. Right. So the fluid flow, we're all about fluid. That's I mean, that is the first thing I always talk about with my clients is how fast is fluid flowing? Because if they're really dehydrated, that means there's nothing I could possibly do to help them until we get their water flowing. Okay. Right? It's pretty simple. Yeah. And so what uh, niacin does, which is just really elegant, is it goes to those big pipes or the pipes and tubes and it just makes them slightly bigger. Okay. So it just dilates or opens up your pipes and tubes. That's all it does. Okay. And so if you think about things like, say for example, dementia and Alzheimer's uh -huh. and even strokes, those conditions primarily happen because the, the pipes and tubes begin to constrict to where they cut off uh -huh. fluid flow. And once fluid flow cuts off, the nutrients can't circulate to different parts of the brain and they begin to either go uh, dark or black. Okay. They'll either brown out, which means they kind of go, you know, foggy, or they black out, which we call strokes. Okay. Right? Because if you cut off all the nutrition and electricity to a part of the brain, it dies, and that's yep. a stroke. Okay. So a really simple technology. I've talked to a lot of people, really smart um, uh, doctors, that they're doing the same thing I'm doing now, is I take a remedial dose of niacin every few days. I just, you know, drink some. And so that but the idea is to keep all your pipes and fluids open so that whatever other uh, health-based technologies, whether it's alternative or, um, you know, uh, the normal mainstream type of medical technology you're using, those substances can actually be delivered to your cells. Okay. Same way with drugs. If you take a drug and it can never reach a cell, it's not going to ever do anything. Uh -huh. It's got to get there first. It's got to arrive at its destination. So niacin is really simple. It just opens up and lets the, the uh, fluid pump. The other really cool thing about niacin is um, uh, niacin has this really interesting feature with fat cells. You know, everybody's trying to, you know, all, everybody's about the fat loss. We're right? all about the weight loss. Fat all loss about the right fat now. loss. Um, so the interesting thing about niacin is that when niacin comes in contact with a fat cell, there's a process that occurs called lipolysis, which basically means that the fat cell's here and the niacin's here and the fat cell goes and blows up. <laughs> That's basically what lipolysis means is that it, it, the, the, the fat cell, the outer membrane of the fat cell basically destabilizes to a point where it just breaks and ruptures. 
and then the fats released. So it's really interesting. And you can you can just go Google lipolysis, and there's just thousands of links that are talking about it. So if you where does the fat go then? The fat gets dis dispersed. So in other words, if if uh, if a fat cell is is broken, then it's got to go someplace. So you better be drinking a lot of water. Yeah. A really bad idea would be to use niacin without drinking a lot of water. Okay. So here's the other thing about niacin too is if you go and take niacin, niacin gives you. A, you've had niacin, right? The you've had I have, but I have. But no, I've I, all of the niacin I purchased in the past, and that this is a great. Oh, this great, is a good question, point. Yeah. Because everything that I purchased in the past is non-flushing. Non -flush. So okay, so the niacin that I'm talking about is the flushing kind, the real kind, not the chemically altered type that that creates a no flush. And we'll we'll put a link for where you guys yeah. can just go over, hop on over to Amazon and grab the yeah. the, the, the niacin product David recommends. Yes. Yeah, so uh, so um, uh, the way that I fix niacin, like you, like if you buy niacin, you can pretty much only buy it in thousand milligram capsules now. Okay. And if you took a thousand milligram capsule, one of my buddies asked me here recently, said David, how do I know if I've taken too much niacin? And I told him that. If it feels like 10,000 angry fire ants are biting you as you hurl into the sun, yeah, you've had too much. Oh my gosh. So if you take one of those 1,000 milligram capsules of niacin, yeah. you will rue the day you were born. And right. you'll do the same for Ryan and me. So don't do that. I'm telling you, you know, add, you know, big circle slash no. Warning. So do what take we do, milligrams. what we do is we take um, a quart bottle or a liter bottle if you're overseas, uh, so with 30 32, 33 ounces of yeah. water, and we take three of the 1,000 milligram capsules and break them open, dump them in there, put the lid on, shake it up. Okay. So now you've got what's called aqueous niacin, which is just uh, niacin that's floating in water, suspended in water. And so you can take, you know, drop by your local liquor store or whatever and buy a little ounce shot glass. So one ounce of that liquid is around 100 milligrams of niacin. Okay. It's just a, it's an easy dose to measure out. And you could start with 50 milligrams or 100 milligrams, and you just drink it, and then you know go about your business. You can mix it with food. As far as I know, I've I've, re I've never read anything in a PDR about a contraindication with any kind of uh, medicine, okay. and there's no contraindication I know of with any herbs. Uh, it's just that you know. Which are both very good points to be aware of if you're yeah, taking medication. Or yeah, something. and you know another thing is there's uh, you know there's a lot of uh, alternative health stuff like people will like. You know, you got to talk to your doctor if you're taking herbs along with your medicine because a lot of herbs and medicines do not mix. They play very poorly together. Uh -huh. So whatever you're putting in your mouth, especially if it's some kind of herb or alternative um, technology that you're doing, please tell your practitioner right up front, I am taking this, this, and this. And if they prescribe you something to take that's a drug, before you take anything else, you call them up on the phone and say, you know, Dr. So-and-so, I'm, you know, thinking about taking this. Is that going to work? Uh -huh. You got you to uh -huh. be, you know, your your practitioner is your your team. Uh -huh. And so be sure and interact with them. So that's the little And that's great advice. Out. That's always great advice, too. You know, your, your practitioner you works that. for you. Yes. And another thing you can do, too, is um, uh, work with what's called a compounding pharmacist. Okay. Um, and you can call around your local um, city. Uh, so if you get a prescription from your uh, practitioner, you have to go someplace and get it filled. So just go in the phone book and look for what's called a compounding pharmacist. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they make medicine based on actually taking, it's the old compounding, you know, crushing it up in a mortar and pestle and measuring it out and making specialized um, uh, capsule dosages and um, uh, volumes of material or potencies. Okay. And those guys tend to know far more about uh, medicines and interactions than most normal pharmacies. So a lot of times if you're using a p compounding pharmacist, you can just say, you know, I'm taking this, here's all my medicines that you're filling my prescriptions. Is this a good thing to take? And all those guys are usually licensed pharmacists or doctors, physicians, and they'll say, no, 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 no. Don't mix that or to my knowledge, there's no contraindication. Great. Well, so that's little, great advice. Little uh, parenthetical there about your um, uh, practitioner. So um, niacin, when you uh, are taking aqueous niacin, start with um, I personally would start with a fifty or milli hundred milligram dose, and the way you do it is you you just drink the 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 liquid like an ounce of it, and only do that once in the morning, and go about your day, and it and you'll notice that uh, you may have sort a little uh, like reddening on your skin or warmness someplace on your body. Usually a lot of people feel it in behind their eyes or in their brain. 
Uh, and what you do is 100 milligrams may not do it. Mm -hmm. So then if it doesn't, the next day you take two ounces, which would be 200. And usually around 200 to 400 milligrams, you'll start feeling a little bit of sensation, okay. whatever that is. Whenever you feel that slight sensation, you stay at that level, like if that's 400 milligrams, you stay there for however many days it takes. It might take a day or two, or it might take two weeks. Okay. Stay there until you feel nothing. Then you go to 500. And then you increase. So what you do is, what, here, here's my suggestion is, if you, whatever you do, if it's comfortable, it's easy to keep doing. If it's painful, eh, you're just going to be out. Right? Yeah. So instead of saying, well, you know, taking 100 milligrams and a few hours later saying, no, I think I'll take another 100 and a few hours later. The first time I took niacin, I took 100 milligrams and nothing happened. And I did that four times. And I took 400 milligrams and I was about to take the 500 milligram dose when it kicked in. Okay. And I felt like I was on fire for about three or four hours. Oh, gosh. So 100 milligrams once a day, first thing in the morning, and, you know, drink and eat all your food and everything, and then just go up incrementally. And if it gets to be too much for you, just, you know, drop down 100 for the next day. Okay, that's good. So David's recommending that you're conservative, yes, that you're incremental. Yep. That's great advice. So the uh, some of the other um, uh, interesting, well, the primary feature of niacin is that it just opens up fluid and the fluid passages and allows your circulatory system and lymphatic, all your fluids to flow easier. So, you know, what you may find is that whatever, you know, if you are feeling some kind of discomfort or especially chronic pain, like uh, fibromyalgia or anything that, um, that has a, a pain in uh, joints or uh, surface tissue or anything like that, you may find that as you take niacin, the, the sensation you're feeling may uh, escalate just a little bit. But if you keep with it, then, you know, over a few days or so, it'll probably um, ameliorate. In, in other words, it'll reduce and probably go to zero okay. most of the time. It's good to know. Yeah, it's good to know. Yeah, so just, you know, so keep it in mind. Great. Well, that's, that, that was a simple thing about niacin. That was a simple, that's really a simple. Really simple. Niacin. Just, yeah, just we make some niacin it, water and mix it up in some try. water. We take it incrementally. David suggested, as always here at the Future of Health, now that you do your own research, talk to your physician about it yes, beforehand. Yes, talk to your practitioner. Make sure that it's not contradictory with anything else that you're currently on, yeah. whether that be a pharmaceutical drug or a natural or alternative herbal medicine. Yep. Now, one thing that I can think of that might be a contraindication is. Um, uh, you'll probably require to be really, really careful if you have um, uh, high blood pressure. Okay. Because high blood pressure means that the fluid pumping through your uh, pipes and tubes, the viscosity is too high. So the, the thickness of the fluid, in other words, you're, you're eating in such a way that the thickness of your fluid, well, you're eating in such a way and also drinking in such a way that the fluid in passing through your body is too thick. And the easy solution for that is drink more water. Most people drink, I mean, I drink probably a gallon to two gallons of water a day. Yeah. And I eat high water content produce, and I drink a lot of um, liquid superfood brews. And so if you're, if you have high blood pressure and you're taking high blood pressure medicine and you start to take niacin, that means that your fluid passages are going to ratchet open probably much faster than somebody else. And so your blood pressure medicine may... Uh, have a more intense effect. Okay. So, so you, what I'm suggesting is make sure that if you start with niacin and you've got a blood pressure issue, whether it's high or low, make sure you check your blood pressure, you know, consistently, like every hour or two, to make sure that the, whatever dose of blood pressure medicine you're taking matches where your blood pressure is. And if you have a question, in other words, if your blood pressure changes dramatically and you're unsure about the dosage of medicine you ought to take. Call your practitioner and say, my blood pressure was this, and now it's this, and how do I adjust my dosage? Right. That's ask your advice. practitioner. That's great. Got to stay with them. So. Well, thank, thank you very much, you know, David. I think that's good. I think that's a great. That's great information. We can take that away. Uh, look for the link to the best niacin product that David is recommending for us uh, below. You can hop on over to Amazon, um, get it, and uh, you can be starting with so. it. You know, probably in the next twenty-four to forty-eight hours. Awesome. Thank you very much, David Favor. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Look take forward care. to having you back here again. You guys take care. Enjoy your day. And as always here at the Future of Health Now, do your own research. Let David know if you have any further questions okay. for him in the comments section below. 
I'm sure you'd be happy to hop on in here and help out. Yep, and be teams with your practitioner. Your health practitioner is your team. And that, that's a great piece of advice we could always utilize more so. And they work for you. So, if, yep. you know, just I'll throw this in there. I do whenever I can. Here at the Future of Health Now, we give your pe uh, health practitioner the benefit of the doubt. They are always well-meaning people. Yes. Um, they, they didn't go to medical school and become medical doctors because they had any, uh, you know, any, any malintent. No. Uh, they've done so because they have the best of intention to sincerely be healers and to be people that help you live a happier, healthier, more vital life. That being said, if you want information or if you're looking to alternative therapies and they may or may not, uh, if they discourage you from doing it and they admit to not knowing anything about it, then I'm going to strongly suggest that you look for someone else. Uh, because this is someone that's supposed to be there to help you, right. uh, to support you along your journey. Yep. Good advice. Thank you very much for being a member of the Future of Health Now community. I'm really happy and grateful to be here with you. Be well. Be well.